Hey YouTube, it's Zoe, and today I'm going to do my favorite books of 2014. 2014 has been an amazing reading year for me. I ended up reading more than double the amount of books that I read last year. I read 84 books. That is just insane. And I read some fantastic books. So this video has been a little difficult to compile, but I ended up picking 11 of my favorite books of the year, and let me share them with you. Number 11 on my list is This Star Won't Go Out by Esther Earle. This is an amazing and inspirational memoir about this girl who was diagnosed with thyroid cancer when she was 12 years old. She was also really good friends with John Green, who wrote an introduction for this book, but my favorite part of this book were her words, Esther's words. She wrote some journal entries, and she took some pictures, and she wrote some stories. They're all included in here, and they are the most meaningful part of this book, in my opinion. She is just so honest and such a great writer. There are also some updates from her parents when she was sick and how she was doing at the time, how her medical procedures were going. It made me cry so much. I read this thick book in one day. You will just fly through it and you will feel like you know Esther, even though you probably have never met her. Number 10 on my list is If I Stay by Gail Foreman. This is the first book in a duology with If I Stay and Where She Went. If I Stay is about a girl named Mia. She is a teenage girl and she gets in a car accident with her two parents and her little brother. She is the only one who survives though, but she is left in a coma. So the entire book, well most of the book, is from her point of view but an out-of-body experience. So she can see the entire car accident happen and when they rush her to the hospital, when she's in the hospital, she can see everything but she's not in her body so she can follow everyone around and all of that. It is so heart-wrenching because she is left an orphan from this car accident and she has to decide if she wants to survive or if she just wants to die because what else is left for her on the earth? I've still not seen the movie though, which is very odd because I loved the book, so why haven't I seen the movie with Chloe Grace Moretz? I don't know, but I will soon. I'm gonna mark that on my mental checklist. Number 9 on my list is Ignite Me by Dahana Mafi. This is the third and final book in the Shadow Me trilogy, which has Shatter Me, Unravel Me, and Ignite Me. Shatter Me is about this girl named Juliet whose touch can kill you. Kind of like the rogue from X-Men mixed with the Incredible Hulk because she's also very super strong, but more rogue than the Hulk because she doesn't turn it into a big burly green man. When they realize that she has these insane powers, they collect her from her family and put her in an insane asylum for about a year until some guy comes in and takes her out and brings her to the head of the government where they want to use her as a torture device for people who are working against this dystopian government. Obviously, she does not want to work for the government, so things happen. Juliet becomes such a strong character, and this man named Warner is also very great in this book. I love it so much. I really recommend this series. It just gets better and better as it goes on. Number eight on my list is the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Riordan. I just finished this series this past month. I read the last three books in December of 2014. I read the first book in 2006-2007 when I was in fifth grade, so it's taken me a little bit of time to get to the rest of the series, but it is definitely worth it. I loved it. I love Greek mythology. The first book is The Lightning Thief, and it is about this boy named Percy Jackson who is 12 years old, and he does not know that he is a demigod, which is half human, half Greek god. His father is Poseidon, but he doesn't know it. He has to flee away from all of these mystical monsters that are after him. He goes to this very cool camp for half-bloods called Camp Half-Blood, which is a camp for demigods, and he goes on a bunch of different quests. He, The first book, he has to go and find Zeus's lightning bolt so that they don't go in a really big war, and every single book after that he goes on another quest to fulfill a prophecy. He also ages one year with every single book. So the first book, he is 12 years old, and by the last book, which is The Last Olympian, he is 16. I love it. It's so funny. Number seven on my list is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This is such an amazing thriller. If you like anything that is kind of creepy or just psychological, this is a great psychological thriller. You, ah, it's so great. I can't say too many things about it because I know there will be spoilers if I say anything too particular about the book. It was made into a movie though and the movie was 
one of the best adaptations of a book that I've ever seen. So if you have not read the book yet, read the book and then watch the movie. The best of both worlds. Number six on my list is a much happier contemporary read and it is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. After a big family crisis, Amy's mom wants to move across country from California to Connecticut. But Amy does not want to drive, so she enlists the help of an old family friend named Roger to help her with the road trip. They don't really know each other at first because it's been a long time since they've seen each other, but through the road trip and the many detours that they make throughout the road trip, they fall in love and they also work through big issues that they have themselves. I love it so much. It is just the perfect summer read, the perfect anytime read. If you're ever in a book reading slump, definitely pick this one up. Number five on my list was also my most anticipated book of 2014. It was City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare, the sixth and final book of the Immortal Instrument series. Cassandra Clare knows how to write the last book of a series and also start a new series which is going to come out next year, 2015. She is just so prolific with her writing. But I laughed and I cried and I cried some more. It was it wrapped up the series so perfectly. Number four on my list is Stolen by Lucy Christopher. It is about this girl named Gemma who has been kidnapped from the airport by this man named Ty who has been watching her and stalking her for years and brings her to the middle of the Australian outback to this house that he made specifically to keep her in so that they could live happily ever after. She obviously is freaked out of her mind at first, but eventually she starts to have feelings for him. You're not sure if it's Stockholm Syndrome, if she's just in love with him because he's the only one around for miles and miles, but you, as a reader, start to feel for him too. It's very odd because you know he's a weird and crazy person, but maybe he has something more to him. Maybe he actually is telling the truth that he actually cares for her and he's not just psychologically imbalance. The really original thing about this book is that it is written as a letter from Gemma to Ty, from the kidnappee to the kidnapper, and it really gets you because it says you did this, you sat down, you blah blah blah, and that is just so different and so powerful because you get it all from her perspective, but as if she's just bearing her soul to this man who kidnapped her. Number three on my list is actually a series. It is The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I read all three books that are out right now, these three, this past year, and in 2015, the prequel, Fairest, and the last book in the series, which is Winter, come out. I am so excited to finish the series, but also I don't want to see it end. It is so great. It is a sci-fi fairy tale retelling series, which so inventive and cool. Every single book focuses on a different fairy tale character and includes the characters from the previous book. The first book is Cinder. It is a retelling of Cinderella, but in this case, Cinder is a cyborg, half human, half robot. She has a cute little friend named Iko and meets Prince Kai, who is so cute. But then there is Scarlet, which is a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. Scarlet is okay, but Wolf is pretty, pretty hunky. But then, there is Cress, my favorite of the series so far. This is a retelling of Rapunzel. I love Cress. She's like a cute little fangirl. I really, really like her. And then there is Captain Thorn, who is her love interest. And I don't know why I love him so much. He's really kooky, but he's my favorite out of all of them, I think. Yes. Number two on my list is the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. I only started this series a couple of months ago and I am already obsessed. And I haven't even read Air of Fire yet, which I hear is the best one by far, so I know my obsession is going to get even worse. This first book is Throne of Glass and it is about this girl named Selena Sardothian who was kidnapped and put in a death camp for about a year because she was an amazing assassin. Within that year though, the prince named Dorian came to release her so that she could be his tribute for his father, the king's competition to find his champion or his assassin, his personal assassin who could kill whoever he wants to kill. She doesn't like assassinating people, but she wants to be the champion because with that comes her freedom from the death camp. And then my number one favorite of 2014 is the Infernal Devices trilogy by Cassandra Clare, which is no big surprise. I talk about this series all the time, but I read this, this three book trilogy, which is thousands of pages in like 
four days. I could not get enough of it. This is also part of the Shadow Hunter Chronicles, along with the Mortal Instruments series and the series to come. But this series is set in the Victorian era, so the 1800s in London, England. It just adds the extra level of interesting to it. They also talk about books a lot, and there's also a heart-wrenching, beautiful, amazing love triangle between the three main characters, Tessa, Will, and Jem. It's, I'm not usually one for love triangles, but this one is just so important to me because I care about all three of the main characters. This first book, which is Clockwork Angel, is about this girl named Tessa Gray who moves from New York City to London, England because both of her parents have died and she goes to see her brother in London. When she arrives, though, her brother is nowhere to be seen and she is kidnapped by these two random ladies who torture her and make her shapeshift. She is left in this random place where these two ladies are for a couple of weeks, I think. And then one day, this beautiful man, this beautiful, beautiful man named Will Herondale comes to rescue her and brings her to the London Shadowhunter Institute to protect her. And then things happen and there are things and gem comes and it's beautiful, there's romance, but there's also a lot of action and death. So those are my favorite books of 2014. I had such a great reading year and I cannot wait to see what 2015 has in store. Through booktube I'm sure I'm going to read a lot of great books and I cannot wait to read a bunch this year and to share it all with you. Please leave below your favorite books of 2014. I really want to know because it might give me some inspiration for what to read next year. And also follow me on Twitter at RedByZoe, on Instagram at RedByZoe, on Goodreads at Goodreads slash RedByZoe, on Tumblr at RedByZoe, everywhere at RedByZoe, and I will talk to you later. Have an amazing 2015! Bye!